agree? Yeah, yeah if you agree, you come sit yeah. in the circle. <laughs> if, you think, if you think that, then you it's think that. Like, so. It's a problem. Yeah, it's not a problem. Oh, we're hey, well, any death that is, an innocent death is tragic, obviously. And even though mass shootings compared to lower scale gun deaths are incredibly rare, I think that it still is a problem that it would be preferable that it didn't happen. No, I agree. It's, it's, you know, in a perfect society, it wouldn't happen, but it's still a problem and a big issue in America right now. Yeah, it's a huge issue everywhere, like, especially in schools, and so many of them are happening every day from gun violence, and I'm glad that you guys also recognize that it is an issue. And to add on to that, children in America under 15 are nine times more likely to die or get shot. But I would not. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that, obviously, because it's a statistic you can't disagree, but it is worth noting that most gun deaths don't happen in mass shootings. Most of them are in individual gun deaths, and they're concentrated in densely populated areas. So I think that while it is a problem, there's other variables involved that lead to most of the gun violence. And then also, tragically, 53% of the gun violence is from suicides, which is also terrible. And that's a separate issue, I think, of what causes that and how to prevent that. And also at a point in 2018, by March, I believe, on average, there was one mass school shooting. Okay, I believe this is more of like a mental health crisis in America rather than a gun crisis. I also think that, I mean, that is true. A lot of people who, especially people who commit mass shootings, Individual shootings tend to be a little different, but mass shootings are caused by people a lot of times who have some sort of mental disability or they've gone through some sort of trauma or that sort of thing. Not that all mentally disabled people commit mass shootings, but that tends to be, they're more likely to do so. Um, there's other methods for people to commit mass murder other than just a gun. You can use a pressure cooker like they did in the Boston Marathon bombing. You can use airplanes like they did on the September 11th attack. People who want to commit evil are going to commit evil regardless of the weapon that is used. Yeah. All right, so yes, people do kill people, but often it's their access to weapons like AR-15s that allow them to like invoke this, like massacres, like in the Las Vegas shooting. Yes, he killed those 58 people, but it was his access to those guns that allowed him to do that. In Australia, they ban guns mostly. They had a huge problem, they had a huge mass shooting, and since then, after the ban of guns for civilians, there hasn't been a mass shooting. And we saw that again in New Zealand with a horrible mass shooting that just happened, that they are limiting the rights of, of citizens, you know. And I, I applaud the actions taken by New Zealand's government. At 10 days, yeah. that's all it took. I don't think that's necessarily true, though, because if you look at two examples that just come to my mind are Switzerland and Israel, both countries with higher gun ownership rates than the United States, but with lower rates of violent crime. So there isn't necessarily a correlation between gun ownership and well, one thing I want to bring in is, I believe it was France, there was a point where there was a lot of knife attacks, and because of their strict gun laws, these people did not have access to guns, and when you're in an enclosed space, like, what causes more death, the guns, or just the knife attack? And what if they used a car? Yeah, more what if they drove a car into a crowd? More people are killed in the United States every year with knives than with guns. I believe, and also, I mean, you're more likely to be killed since since the 1990s, I believe, is a statistic that I looked up. You're more likely to have been killed by either a knife, a blunt object, someone's fist, than with a gun in the United States. But that does not mean that... I mean, guns are still a problem, but there's yeah. other ways to kill people. It's a, yeah, I agree. In, in, yeah, in you, Russia, they have axes. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you, you can't, acid, you, but. The, the bottom line is you can't entirely discredit all the other methods there are just because they're less I mean, we're not, we're not There's always all, a way actually. to kill a person, but it's, are you going to kill someone with a candlestick or are you going to shoot 50 people with an AR-15? I mean, yeah, there's so many, sorry. There's, of course there are other ways to kill people, like we've seen the movie Clue, like there's a ton of different <laughs> ways, that's kind of how it works, but killing someone with a knife, it, just in like a time management type way, it's easier to go around and be like, pew, 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 you know? Of course, people kill people. Yeah. But the tools that they yeah. wield also kill people. And guns just happen to be the most effective way. That's why we use guns in, like, you know, the military. <laughs> yeah. Not, 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 not. 
Yeah. If it was the most efficient way to kill people with a knife or a fist, we'd go around in the military punching people. I mean, it's also <laughs> important to note that there's 300 plus million legally owned guns in the United States, and a lot of those people aren't out committing crimes or doing things bad. So guns aren't only bad, they can also be used for good. They can be used. AR 15s are one of the most commonly owned guns. For, when people say it's for self defense reasons, they own AR 15s because they're generally easier to aim than handguns because you have more control and they can fire more rounds, which makes them effective for self defense and everything. Yeah, so I don't I don't know about teachers owning guns. I think that's going to be a little skeptical, but I think armed like cops, maybe even veterans that are in new jobs would definitely be beneficial because when you think about it, when a school shooting happens, the first thing you do most likely is call the cops who will take like 15 to 20 minutes to get to the school anyways. Yeah. It's a lot easier if you have an armed person on site ready to end the shooting right then and there. And I think having someone like a school resource officer in particular, who we already do have someone with a gun in our building, Officer Lowry, I think that makes us much safer. I mean, sometimes that does fail. Like in the Parkland shooting, most notably, the school resource officer basically failed to do his job and ran away and said, but most of them, there's a that, lot that's of other, the fault of the person. That's the fault of the person, not of the system. There's a lot of other instances, like at Clarksburg High School, when a student brought a gun the day after the Parkland shooting, and the school resource officer, who is armed, went in to the student's backpack and retrieved the gun. And having him be armed with a mechanism to have equal force to any sort of violent perpetrator that comes into the school gives him the ability, him or her the ability to do that. Yes. <laughs> All right, so. To put guns into schools and to pay for all of the training that would be required for those teachers, that costs millions of dollars. And why spend that money on those guns when instead you can spend that money on raising teacher salaries or getting supplies that students and teachers need in order to be successful? Salaries aren't going to matter if a shooting happens and people are dying. I think that's more important than... And that's why I agree when he says... And I don't, I don't think officers having guns like yeah. Officer Lowry, like, so yeah, I, I, I also don't think teachers should have it. And quite frankly, while you do bring it up, I, I'm not sure, I don't speak for Drew, but me personally, if a teacher has a con had a concealed carry permit anyway, and in a state like Maryland, that's extremely hard to get and requires going to 14 hours of training and doing other things, and they do that all on their own prerogative and have then pay the fees. It's, it's voluntary. Sort of thing. Like, you don't then have to do that. If they want to don't go want through that process, then I think that they should be able to carry a gun in school and they have a concealed carry permit anyway, especially in a state like Maryland where it's extremely hard to get one. A lot, a lot of times you either have to demonstrate that you have a threat made against you or if you're a law enforcement veteran or a veteran of our military, they'll give you one as a little easier. We've all heard the phrase, don't fight fire with fire. And there there are cases in, in how like teachers that have guns and were like experimenting with this, they shot the gun in the classroom or t students are feel that they're like, that they, they should be more aggressive because just of a presence of a gun in a classroom. And yes, I know we're talking about resource officers, and I'm glad that Officer Lowry is here because I trust him. He's a police officer. But the everyday citizen should not have a gun in a place where we educate our children. I'll, I'll start, why not? I do think that this was actually really interesting and kind of really cool to actually hear everyone's views. I think that it helped me learn a lot more about your side. And at the end of the day, I think we all do want to focus on safety, even though like we can't exactly all take the same actions of why we want the safety or how we're going to get the safety. But I think that at the end of the day, we're all here to talk about you know wanting to be safe. So. Yeah, I agree. I think safety is the heart of this discussion, and I think the dissenting opinions amongst many different groups of people in the country and elsewhere. Um, they create these kind of echo chambers where people don't really listen to each other. I think the biggest thing uh, now, especially in a country that we were just talking about, gives power to the people and not the government, uh, but not as much the government, is to listen to each other and to not, you know, I'm not not to say to not march and to not like stand up for what you believe in, but to only only do that if you're going to hear out the other side and cooperate with each other. All right, so I'm really glad that we did this. Like, at the end, like I respect you guys because at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We want safe schools. We want a safe society that's just we have different ways yeah. of going at it. <laughs> um, I agree with what's been said in this last segment. I think that to highlight the earlier conversation about the intentions of the other side, I think to have a conversation like this, it's imperative to assume that the other side has good intentions. Because yeah. if we were here saying, oh, 
Second Amendment, and we got to stand up for the Second Amendment. And everyone against it is just a communist who wants to take away all our rights. We wouldn't well, get anything done. Okay. And if, not, I'm <laughs> saying not to say that, but yeah. Yeah. the same okay. way if you guys were to say, oh, yeah. they're a bunch of hillbillies with their guns and they don't want to do anything, <laughs> that would be bad also. We have to be able to come together yeah. and assume the other side has good intentions. I'm, I'm really glad I came here today. It was really last minute because Sam just called me out of the balloon. He was like, hey, do you want to be in this? I was like, yeah. Um, I hope you guys don't see us in a worse light because I certainly don't see you guys in a worse light. I, I love that like we talked this and like yeah. it was civil and we didn't call it to their names like a lot of people try to do. And um, I think, again, we all just care for this country and for the people here. Yeah. yeah, and adding on to that, like as I was saying earlier, like. Just because we have an opinion on this topic doesn't define us as a person. Like, it doesn't make you a bad person that you disagree with me. And I think it's especially powerful that at our age, like, we stand up for what we believe in and we can't come together and talk like this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right now, hug it out. Yeah, now hug it out. Group hug. Aww. Cool. Okay. 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 Thank you, guys.